Hi brothers and sisters, Shalom. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday commemorates our Lord Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Palm branches were laid across his path to welcome him. This was normally reserved for a king. But this is a very different king. A very different king. And in uh, Matthew 21, here it says, it said, all this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and riding on a donkey. When an earthly king enters, enters a city, usually he'll be on a white horse surrounded by soldiers, much shouting with trumpet blowing. But when Jesus entered Jerusalem, it was different. It was surrounded by common people and even children. And they were all shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. What made him a king that is so different from an earthly king? He came not to be served. He said he came to serve. He's the servant king. He came to suffer for us, to be with us. I believe this is a very important message for us in this hour, where there is much suffering, darkness, uncertainty in the world. To know that we have a king, a king that is not removed from us, a king that is not far from us, but a king that has come to serve us, to suffer with us. In the book of Isaiah, this is what is described as prophesied. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, verse 2, verses 2 and 3. He said, He has no form of comeliness. There is no beauty that we should desire Him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Here he's described as a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We thank God that we have a king, our Lord Jesus, coming to us, not to dominate, not to put us down, but he has come to serve. He knew about loss. He knew what it meant to suffer loss, the loss of a loved one, one that is close to you. You know, we uh, read of uh, news, hear of news, we watch the TV of uh, the reports of thousands who are infected by this covid and uh, many dying, and uh, different ones, even those on the front line dying. But it seems to be far removed from us. But when someone that is close to you is infected and taken from you, it's a different matter. It is now a matter of your heart. It's all now almost three weeks that our beloved Pastor Chang has departed in the glory. But he is not somebody removed from us. And for me, he was, my, he was a brother to me. I saw him growing up in church, working with him, and even not a single day passed that I would think of him. Last night I was dreaming I had a dream of him, and we were discussing what to put up, what to put up in the social media to inform our people. And when I got up, I realized that it was just a dream. And we have somebody that is dear and close, and is now no more. There is still that grief, deep grief, much grief, and I believe there will be something that words not adequate to express. Well, as, I, as I 
looked to the Lord Jesus, I felt so comforted that he's described as a man of sorrows and of grief, acquainted with grief. He's not removed from us. He knew exactly what it was like to lose someone. The Gospel of John 11, when Lazarus died, he stood outside the tomb. He was deeply moved. And in John 11, the Bible said, he wept. He wept. He was so deeply moved. He wept. And the people around him said, see how much he loved. And I believe that our Lord Jesus is not removed from all this that we are going through. He is with us. He, he felt the same pain, even deeper, as with us. Jesus also knew about what it means to be rejected. He looked over Jerusalem and he cried out. He said, O oh, Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you like the mother hen. O oh, Jerusalem, how I long. It was the longing of his heart. But you would not. There was that deep sense of rejection. Somebody he loved. That Jerusalem that he loved. His people rejected him. He knew about rejection. Deep rejection. And he also, Jesus also knew about what it meant to be stigmatized. You know, today, when... Uh, this, this news of COVID spreading around and we have reports of which area is a hot spot and, and so on to avoid. You know, when we hear of uh, somebody or is being tested positive or certain areas, you know, there is a sense of uh, we want to avoid. You know, a stigma is just like in the ancient time, a brand that they put on a person. Uh, so that we people, when they see that, will avoid. And we have gone, our church, EBC, has tested a little bit of that, or something of, of, of that. When news broke out that one of our pastors, you know, got this and, uh, we, and he's now uh, no more with us, you know, the mention of uh, the name of the church and so on, you know, there's kind of a stigma. Our brothers, sisters, I thank the Lord Jesus. He came near to the leper. A leper during his, his days was considered unclean. Nobody would dare to go near. But he went near and he had compassion on them. In the Gospel of Mark, he said he had compassion on them. He touched them and he healed them. We thank the Lord. He's with us in all of this. He's a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He's not a king that lived in the palace, surrounded by servants, protected, sheltered. But he's a man of sorrow, acquainted with the griefs of the common people, the pain of the common people. He suffered for us. And therefore, in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, that's what it says. Book of Hebrews, in uh, chapter 2, it said this, that since children are made of flesh and blood, it is therefore that the Savior took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by his death. By embracing death, taking it unto himself, he destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who through life were scared of death and it is obvious it says of course that he did not go all through all this for the angels but it was for people like us that's why he had entered into every detail of our human life then when he came before God as a high priest to get rid of people's sin that he would have already experienced all this himself 
all the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help where help was needed. So our Lord Jesus, our great high priest, he had gone through all this for us. And he went to the cross. And book of and Peter said, by his stripe. And Isaiah said, by his stripe, we are healed. We thank the Lord. He has not come as a king who is above all the pain and suffering. But he came to be with us entered into our suffering, walked with us, and even to the point of death on the cross, that he took on death, that he might conquer it, that we, through him, that we will have hope. Hope. Yes, we grieve, we deeply grieve, but we also have hope, eternal hope, because of what he has done for us. Now, brothers and sisters, there's also... At this time, hit the word of God. In the book of Hebrews, it says, let's not neglect the gathering together, gathering together as we see the day of the Lord drawing near. Now, I know the gathering together is not possible at, at this time because of the MCO, but we can gather uh, virtually. And I'm very encouraged to uh, hear and receive uh, reports and sharing from our different cell group leaders uh, gathering together through the different uh, uh, media uh, to pray to share to encourage uh, one another and and this is something that we, we must continue to do let's continue to do that encourage one another yes as the day of the Lord is drawing near praying praying for one another, and praying for our church family, praying for the community, praying for those who are going through this suffering, praying for the authorities, praying for those in the front line. Let's continue to do that. And so let me end with, uh, uh, in um, Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, it says that pray with all prayers on all occasions in the Spirit, Yes, in the Spirit, on all occasion, with all kinds of prayer, and for everyone, especially for the saints and for everyone. May the Lord bless you.